What's up guys? Welcome to Transformation. My name is Patrick Blake Leeper and I was born without legs. I was destined to spend my life in a wheelchair, but with the right mindset and with sheer determination, I now hold eight Paralympic track and field medals. Not stopping there, I'm now on a quest to become the fastest man alive and to inspire others to overcome their own limitations. Today, I'm talking with fitness superstar AJ. After nearly dying from congestive heart failure, he was determined to continue his fitness goals. Today, AJ has started a nonprofit organization that raises awareness and funds for heart conditions, all while carrying an artificial heart on his back. Welcome to Transformation. AJ, what's going on, man? Welcome to Transformation. Thanks for having me. My first question for you is, when did you first start working out? Like, where did it all start with, with the whole fitness world? I would say my entire life I'd been involved in sports. My parents really pushed us to be active. I really got into lifting and training when I started college. I uh, chose to do it at the end of the day. So, I, you know, whatever was bothering me throughout the day, you know, classes or studying, I got to go to the gym and just like work it out, literally. And I just, you know, j I was able to really with every single rev I'm able to just let out a little bit of stress at a time you're constantly proving to yourself that there is such thing as a progress there is such thing as success if you go to the gym you remain consistent you'll see those things start to happen you know for me when I go to the track to run and you know I finish the workout and I kind of push the limits just a little bit that day a little bit more yeah just a little bit more that feeling when I walk away and nobody can take that away from me. When did you realize something was wrong? And, and, and can you explain to the viewers, like, what, what really happened? Like, break that down. I went out for a run, a routine run, and, you know, not even 10 feet from my mailbox. I just had this weird restrictive, uh, like, the, like there's something restricting my, my ability to breathe. It felt like my lungs had turned into sponges. It's like you're trying to breathe and you're getting, you know, very little bits of air. I stopped and called my doctor immediately and saw him the next day. They quickly diagnosed me with what was called a viral myocarditis and um, luckily I was able to compensate for that for the next couple of years or so. I even won my professional fit modeling pro card and uh, you know there were no other red flags, there were no cause for alarm, I was on a couple of medications. Here you are living your life, right, yeah. doing everything that you can, especially in the fitness world and you know, life throws you a curveball, and, and like your life is basically flipped upside down. Like, what was your head at? Like, what was you thinking when all of this went down in your life? My condition actually began to deteriorate, and luckily we were able to catch it right away. But the fact that it had deteriorated despite all of the helpful medication, you know, time had run out and um, something else needed to be done. And that was when they had to come forth and tell me that I had to have my uh, assist, my artificial assist device implanted in. And, you know, at this point you just realize, you start to ask, you know, why me? And I found myself at home, not going anywhere. I was in my room all the time. I was depressed. I wasn't even able to get dressed without, you know, gasping for air. It just felt like my life had just fallen apart and picking up the pieces was just a job that I didn't want to do. What do you, what do you consider your, your lowest point? Like, what, how bad did it get? It got bad to the point where I kind of just didn't care. You know, I stopped going to work, stopped going to the gym, you know, and I became this, I don't know, like a bump on a log. But um, this was just another test, you know, administered by the universe that's going to put me through something else. And I'm confident enough to say here I am today, living with it, loving life. I mean, by the time I was in the hospital, I was feeling a lot better and I really wanted to work out, but I really couldn't. The most I could do was push-ups in my, in my um, ICU room, which I was actually told not to do, but four side curtains, so I'd pump out maybe a few here and there. I know I wasn't supposed to, but mentally I needed to really, I needed something stimulating and that's what I needed to really, you know, change as a person because there are other people out there who can't even leave their hospital beds and I'm gonna get a second chance at life are you kidding me I'm not gonna waste this that was the turning point yeah that's that's huge man it's just I hear it in you you know the power of perception and the power of perspective right when you could perceive life and, and wake up each and every day and, 
and be thankful for what you have. You know, we're resi you know we want to be invincible. We feel resilient. We feel like nothing can bring us down. Um, and I still struggle with that to this day. I, mean, I feel amazing and I try to remember that, I try to remind myself that I'm still a heart transplant patient. Like here we are talking about life and death and, and you had the, one of the best attitudes I ever met in my life. Like this is truly amazing. Like how did you stay positive? You know, I just, I really just kept my mind on the things that I wanted to achieve in life. And of course I want to be healthy again. Of course I want to get my transplant, but I wanted to think about how happy I would be when I go back to school and pursue my masters. I, I saw myself being surrounded with so many blessings and I was in a place in the hospital where people did pass away and they pass away often. I would see families come and go. You know, I almost at times I felt kind of guilty that I was still here able to laugh almost every single day and to walk around and joke with my nurses. And I created the, um, the Hearts at Large Foundation since its inception and we've raised over $20,000. That's huge, man. You know, I, I hear it, like I said, in your voice and in your soul is a level of gratitude. You understand how just like that, in a blink of an eye, it could be taken away. I'm getting a second chance at life. I want to start over and redo some of the things that you know weren't able to happen for me when I wanted them to. Dude, AJ, thank you so much for taking your time and then explaining and telling you know your story to me and, and to the fans. This is truly amazing. But before we go, like I, I have to know, what advice would you have to people who's going through life and everything is completely normal and just boom, all of a sudden they hit a huge setback? If you find yourself in that position and you still have things that are on your mind 24 seven, whether they're good or bad, you need, you must act on them. If it's something that you can't shake, something that's in on your mind 24 seven, that you can't go a second without thinking about, it's something important that you need to act on. Awesome. AJ, it's an honor and it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for having me, Patrick. One thing that I take away from AJ's story is that level of gratitude and always finding something to be thankful for. Thanks for watching. We love hearing your own inspiring stories. So be sure to let us know in the comments below. Subscribe for more episodes every week. This is Patrick Blake Leeper. You're watching Transformation. See you next time. <laughs>